Hi, everyone. I'm Annalise Record, and I'm going to share with you today something that had a profound impact on me as a math educator is the development of mathematical reasoning. It's not just about our students getting right answers, it's about their thinking and how they got to their answer that can have the most profound impact on their math journeys. Because if we have students in upper elementary and they're trying to figure out a multiplication problem, but they're counting things one by one in each of those equal groups, they're not going to be efficient and they're not going to be flexible. That's what we want to develop in our world of fluency, not only with basic facts, but it extends to all the sets of numbers our students will encounter on their entire math journeys. So I also want to make sure that we're making it visible to all. It's not just about saying out loud what these are, but how can I make it visible to you of what this journey is from the counting phase of reasoning, typically from birth until kindergarten, uh, grades one and two, when I help them move into the additive phase of reasoning, and then grade three to five, we're working on multiplicative reasoning in preparation for the proportional reasoning of grades six to eight and the functional reasoning of nine to 12. But what does this look like? What are we talking about exactly of how do we talk about the difference between counting and additive and multiplicative? And to help make this trajectory visible, I'll be using a website called BradyCamp.com, which has the only official app for Cuisinier Rods. They are my favorite math manipulative. I know they have the power to help our students move from counting into additive and additive into multiplicative. Let's begin with that three plus the four. If we were to ask students to tell us how many of those white cubes are there, and also how did they know, they all may tell us that there are seven of those cubes. But the real interesting thing is what was their thinking to get to that seven, right? We're honoring not just the answer, but how they got their answer. Because one student may have counted one by one all of these cubes starting at one. Another student may have started with a three, and then counted on four more. So they're keeping this as one group in their head and counting on the second addit. Another student might say, well, I began with the four and I counted on the three. And we might ask them, well, why did you begin to start with the four since it comes second? And they can tell us that, well, it's a bigger number. And if I count on from the larger number, even if it comes second, so they understand the community of property of addition, then they can get to their answer more efficiently. Now, all of that is the counting phase of reasoning. We want to help move our students into additive reasoning, but what is that? Well, additive reasoning is to look for chunks of the amounts that we're adding and to be more flexibly and efficiently finding our answers by using those chunks. Now, I can be modeling that here with the Cuisinier rods, where I have the rod that is worth three units and the one that's worth four. And I might say, are there any amounts of these that you know for sure? Now, if a student knows that three and three is six, one more they can reason is the seven for the three plus the four. Now they certainly can do that same thing up here. So by seeing this visual, students might tell you, I know three and three is six and one more must be seven. On other students, they enjoy looking at it as uh, four and four is eight, right? And then one less makes the seven. So there's no dictate of one right way of doing this. It's about being aware of the trajectory of the learning and helping facilitate that journey of our students into that additive reasoning. Another way students might solve this problem of three plus four is to think about making a five. Benchmarks of five and 10 are a critical cornerstone of building number sense with our students. So they may think about taking one from the three. So decomposing the three to give one from the three to the four to rename this expression as five plus two which might be easier for their brain. I can help make that visual to you here by lining up the four and the three in a linear way, and then down below lining up that five rod, that one of that three can be reassociated with the four to make it be a five, which also translate to our work with larger numbers when we can bridge a 10. We also can be thinking about that as making the nearest 10, the nearest 100, and the nearest whole. So that additive reasoning, of being able to use chunks of numbers of what we're working with can help us more flexibly and efficiently get to our answer. And it's not just working on basic facts, but it extends to all the number sets students will encounter in their math journeys. As we move on to the multiplicative reasoning, so we have a six by eight array. I built them here using the ones cubes as lots of students will do when they use actual unifix cubes or they may draw an array using X's. How do they figure out how many that is in all? Are they counting? Are they counting one by one? Are they skip counting? 
that's in that additive phase of thinking that multiplication means repeated addition. So they're thinking about adding those groups together. Now they might skip count by sixes or they might skip count by eights, whatever their brain decides that it wants to do. But that is additive reasoning. It's not multiplicative reasoning and it will not translate as we get to larger numbers, decimals and fractions. So what does multiplicative reasoning sound like? It's finding groups of groups. So using the Cuisinier odds, the students can see them existing as an eight. So in the US, we usually read six times eight as six groups of eight. So I can imagine I've got six eights. So use the Cuisinier odds, I have those uh, amounts existing as a group visually for the students. And now they might be skip counting by eights. And my response back to them would be, are there any groups of eights that you know for sure? If they know that two eights is 16, can we use that to relate to figuring out what three sets of those are? And in fact, this is a precursor to double and halving, which is a phenomenal strategy um, that we can double one of the factors as long as we half the other. We can make half as many groups as long as we double the size in each group. So six times eight can become three times 16, which is what students are doing when they're doing the repeated addition. So we want to connect that in that moment to the multiplicative reasoning. As you go back to the six by eight, again, are there any groups of eight that you know for sure? Maybe a student knows that three eights is 24. Well, how many more do we have to get to? Well, it's actually double, right? There's a relationship that six groups of something is double the three groups of something. This is the heart of the distributed property of multiplication. Right, but it's always built on what does a student know and how can we help them connect what they do know to solve what they're needing to find out. Other students may say, well, I know that five eights is 40. So one more eight is 48. Although I've seen students combine that multiplicative reasoning with some counting by telling me that they know five eights is 40 and then they count on that last eight one by one, right? There is so much for us to be listening to for the thinking and reasoning of our students. And what we do by helping them facilitate this counting to additive to multiplicative will not only help them with their basic facts, but it will extend to the larger numbers, multi-digit numbers, decimals, and fractions. It's a part of a very powerful math journey and providing access for so many more of our students along the way.